In the last four years since leaving England, we have crossed two oceans and sailed over halfway around the world. But that journey has now ground to a halt, and we find ourselves stuck, surrounded by closed borders, with no idea of when we will be able to continue our journey home. With the continuing lockdown in the world, our thoughts are turning from when can we continue our adventure to how do we get home. In this video, we'll try to share with you some of our plans and worries about the route home that are constantly in our minds, even while we live in this beautiful location. I used to regularly wake up on Florence and not know where we were. I'd forgotten. I couldn't work it out because we change locations so often that it wasn't until I poked my head out of the hatch and had a look around I could remember which country or which bay we were in. But I haven't had that problem for four months now. We came into this bay in April and it's now August and we are still here. We were actually planning to cross the Indian Ocean and be most of our way across by now and heading for South Africa. Amy spent two months working on the paperwork and the extra insurances required for us to visit uh, an isolated atoll in the middle of the Indian Ocean, uninhabited atoll, and uh, we've been looking forward to that for years mm. and it's, it's just not going to happen now. It's not going to happen this year. Um, we were actually one of only nine boats who were authorised a permit. They stopped giving those out in March um, and we're not going to have the time to go there and I think Realistically, they're probably not going to offer any next year. Well, we don't know. Mm. But the reason that we're still here is because South Africa closed its borders and it wouldn't have been safe for us to set off across an ocean knowing that the, our destination and our safe port at the other end was closed and would not let us in. So that's why we're still here at the moment. Sailors often say that their plans are written in the sand at low tide, but this year has been like no other. This is actually a safe place to be. We don't have to worry about cyclones here because we are so close to the equator they don't get cyclones and in this bay and in bays that are within 16 miles of here there are plenty of safe anchorages where we can weather storms from any direction if any normal thunderstorm turns up. So it's a safe place to be. We are being looked after by the Indonesian government very well. We can get basic groceries um, so we're not in a bad place, it's actually a very beautiful place as well. Yeah, but technically at the moment we don't have our visas or passports. They've been oh, yeah. with the immigration office for nearly three weeks now, but uh, fingers crossed in the next couple of days we should get those back um, with the official stamp in to say that we've been extended for two more months and we can extend again uh, beyond that. So Another two more months only though, so we've got pretty yeah. much four months from now yeah. and then Theoretically, our Indonesian visas run out and we would have to leave Indonesia, but there is nowhere around here open for us to go to. So hopefully if there's still nowhere open, they won't just kick us out. Yeah, we feel that we are in a really good place here and that we're well looked after. Um, the officials are doing their absolute best um, to try and make us re welcome here, really, and, yeah. and look after us. So we are in a really good place here. But that doesn't stop us stressing about what might happen because it is uncertain. There's no guarantee that we can stay here. We don't know which country is going to open, where we can go to. We don't know what is the best thing to do, whether um, we should cross the ocean now or wait another year. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be better next year. So we're actually having quite a lot of sleepless nights. Um, and we're constantly checking the updates for which countries are open and uh, where borders are changing um, all the time. Mm -hmm. Having chosen to stop here and not cross to South Africa this year, our plan was to wait until Malaysia or Thailand reopen their borders after lockdown so that we can travel back there, restock Florence with all the food and spares, haul out, put a fresh coat of paint on the bottom so that we're all ready to cross the Indian Ocean next season when hopefully things would be open. However, two things have just happened that have thrown that plan <laughs> completely in the air. One, we've heard that Thailand is unlikely to open their international borders until next year, so we can't go back there. Um, and two, South Africa has potentially opened their borders to allow some yachts to transit through. 
So yep. now, instead of being comfortable with a plan, we're thinking, well, maybe we should cross the Indian Ocean this year. But the problem with that is you have to be, because of cyclone season, we have to cross before cyclone season in the South Indian Ocean, which means we need to be in South Africa by the 1st of November. So it's not something that we can wait and see how things play out. Mm -hmm. Time is ticking and we just had a complete and utter stress out and meltdown about what the blazes we're doing, what we should be doing. Should we wait here for another year? Should we be going now? And uh, it's pretty stressful, really. Yeah, we don't even have our passports. So we, although we should be leaving now, if we were going to cross to um, South Africa, then we don't really have that option. So. And we would need to restock Florence first and um, obviously that means we need to go somewhere to, to get supplies because we've and been... And check using... out of Indonesia. So realistically by the time we were actually ready to go um, we're talking it's, two be weeks. Two weeks least. before we could be ready to leave Which is assuming the we got our passports start back. of September and getting really close to being far too late in the season to be crossing the Indian Ocean. So although Half of us is saying it would be a good idea. The other half is saying, really, it wouldn't. No, we should wait until next year, but then we're stressed because we don't know. Yeah. We could be sat in this anchorage until May next year and mm -hmm. then be in the same situation, but we can't haul out in Indonesia. So Florence is going to have a lot more growth on her bottom because the antifoul wears out. Um, and obviously things are going to break by then and we're going to need more spares and parts. Yeah. And although South Africa is saying that it will allow yachts to transit through, um, the borders are in no way open. And it's not as if it's open as a cruising destination. It's just open to application um, for boats who are in unsafe areas of the Indian Ocean yeah. to transit through. So if we were to cross to South Africa, really we'd just be, I guess if we're sailing home to the UK, we'd be sailing from here to Cape Town, which is about 5,000 miles. And that would probably take us about five or six weeks at sea, mm -hmm. um, possibly stop up at Reunion on the way mm -hmm. for supplies. Um, and then once we're around South Africa, we would have to leave and go to the Caribbean. And then from the Caribbean, if we're following the trades, home to the UK. So we'd be doing about 18,000 miles in less than a year, not really seeing much on the way just to get back home. Um, and I guess then we just sit at anchor at home for a while. So <laughs> in quarantine, <laughs> yeah, in quarantine. For a year. yeah. Is, is that who knows what the right thing is to do? I guess what we're trying to do here is share uh, what the options are and the, all the things that we have to think about in this situation. And we're also, I think, what hopefully might be coming across is how it actually makes us feel. It's a pretty stressful situation, even though outside we have palm trees, beautiful sandy beaches, and clear waters to jump into. Yeah. Um, so why are we leaving? We're in a gorgeous place. Um, and it might seem that normally our lives are as free and easy as they possibly could be and that we just go anywhere we like, whenever we like. But in reality, we're always constrained by the weather and we're always constrained by the seasons. So this crossing of the Indian Ocean has actually been in our minds um, and in our planning for over a year. Oh, for well years. over a year. Yeah, we even started yeah. thinking about this um, before we left the UK. Mm -hmm. So... Essentially, there are two options for crossing the Indian Ocean. There is the southern route via South Africa, and there is the northern route via the Red Sea and into the Mediterranean. Until now, we totally discounted the option of going the northern route through the Red Sea and into the Met. And that's mainly because of the risk of piracy around the Horn of Africa, but also because a lot of the countries surrounding the Red Sea are politically unstable. So we'd be sailing pretty much directly and spending weeks at sea worried about every single boat that came anywhere near us. So not a particularly desirable option really for us. So we were set on going the southern route. And the southern route for us, the more we looked at it, became more and more attractive because there are so many places en route that we really would like to visit, such as Madagascar and its amazing wildlife. But it's not without its challenges. The southern route instead of piracy, has storms, so we're forced to choose between pirates and storms effectively. Uh, there's a lot of storms around the southern tip of Africa, and there's also a very strong ocean current which runs against the winds in those storms, and that can make boat breaking conditions. For most of our overall planning, we use information from this book, the Jimmy Connell World Cruising Routes. But what it says about the passage across the bottom of South Africa is really sobering reading. 
Most passengers will encounter mixed weather on this route, with winds blowing anything from 0 to 50 knots. However, very few are spared the southwest gales that occur south of Madagascar and that succeed each other at two to three day intervals. Southwest gales combined with a strong south flowing current can create giant waves of up to 15 metres in height. Waves big enough and steep enough that they would easily roll Florence upside down. But ultimately we would prefer to face storms, which we can get some weather forecast of, rather than the uh, risk of being boarded by pirates. I really appreciate that it's totally a first world problem and that there are a lot of people who are in much worse situations than we are at the moment. And being able to travel with our boat is a privilege and not a right, but it doesn't make it suck any less <laughs> that what we've been yeah, enjoying and working towards for the last four years is just totally being cut off. It's on hold for this year, but we don't know whether it's ever going to be possible in the next few years. Um, who knows what next year will bring? That's the that's the trouble. Um, it's the difference between cruising and having our dream, cruising and exploring, uh, meeting new cultures, seeing new places, and just finding a way to safely get us and Florence home to England. Mm -hmm. And those are two very different things, really. Yeah. Just what... <laughs> the things that we really enjoy from travel is meeting new people uh, from different cultures and really understanding how people live in different places around the world. And that's not sensible at the moment. Um, and who knows when it's going to be again. <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment we are planning to, I guess we, we pretty much missed the option, the, the weather window for cyclones to go across the southern Indian Ocean. Uh, now, unless something changes in the next few weeks, we're not going to go that way, um, which means we're going to be waiting here in Indonesia until either Malaysia or Thailand open. Hopefully we can go back there, restock, put a fresh coat of paint on Florence's bottom, get some restock the spares and the food. Um, uh, if we can't go back there then we'll probably be here until next year in this anchorage. Um, or if we around want... this area of coast we've got a little bit more freedom. Yeah we can now. travel about 18 miles can't we? We might <laughs> That might extend, who knows. Um, but if we have to wait until next year, uh, if we miss this opportunity now to go across the South Indian Ocean, then the next opportunity is the Red Sea route and that opportunity is from about leaving here from about late December early January mm -hmm. uh, next year to go with the seasons to get across the North Indian Ocean or we wait here until May next year which is a very long time away uh, and have a second attempt at the Southern Indian Ocean and just hope that by then the world will have got on top of these problems enough that um, we can safely visit these countries uh, without putting anyone in danger. But there's no way that we're going to set off anywhere without prior permission um, to being able to enter a country and knowing what the process is in order to do that. So we're safe the off moment, staying put. That means that we're staying here. You might be asking yourself why we don't just leave Florence, fly back to the UK and then come back to her when this is all over. But that, unfortunately, from Indonesia is not really an option or from where we are in Indonesia. The nearest marina or safe place that we can leave Florence is hundreds of miles away, upwind against the trade winds. And even if we could leave her somewhere, by flying out of this country, we have no idea when we would be able to return. And Florence is our home. We would mm -hmm. effectively be abandoning her um, where she would be in the tropics, not being maintained, and she would just deteriorate very quickly and we could end up with with no home. Yeah, we, we would be abandoning her. Yeah. So that's not something we're contemplating doing. Yeah. By hook or by crook, we will get Florence home <laughs> to England somehow. Um, mm -hmm. We're not going to give up. Um, it just means we're on pause potentially for up to, well, for another nine months maybe. Mm -hmm. And then just fingers crossed things will improve. So we can still continue to share the adventure that we're having here. Mm -hmm. um, and it is still an adventure. We are still in an amazing place. We try to constantly look at the positives of the situation. Yeah, we've got lots of silver linings here. It's um, it's really not a bad 
place to be at all. Yeah. So hopefully we've given you an update on where we are, so what we're trying to do, uh, trying to share some of our feelings, which we don't always do very well. Um, we're not complaining about the situation we're in. Everybody is in a difficult situation in the world at this time, and there are a lot of people that are in much worse situations than we are. We are lucky that we're both safe, and our families back in the UK are safe as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. This, this video is in no way a complaint. It's just explaining or trying to explain our thought process as to where we go from here and, and really what the future brings. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. And thank you especially to everybody who supports us. We really appreciate your support and all your kind messages. They really keep us going out here. And we'd especially like to thank our star patrons for their support. If you would like to support the making of these videos, please join the crew by following the link to our Patreon page. And don't forget to subscribe to catch the next one.